The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am playing through Lost in Time and Space, the sixth and final Mythos pack in the Dunwich Legacy cycle. Uh, apparently, my copy of this Mythos pack got lost in time and space on its way to my friendly local game store, so I only just received it. It's a fun scenario, although it can be a little tricky to, at times, to manage all of the uh, various triggers that are going on. So I'm uh, glad to be able to bring you this playthrough today to uh, to just uh, show you how it works, and and maybe we'll run into some of those those tricky situations, and we can work through them. As an added bonus, I ended up with a spare copy of Lost in Time and Space due to the shipping snafu. So uh, by all means, stick around to the end if you're interested in picking up a copy of this scenario for your collection. I am going to give it away. If you're not interested in the playthrough, you're always welcome to skip ahead to the end for the free stuff. I am going to be playing Lost in Time and Space in standalone mode with Ashcan Pete. This deck was uh, is based on one given to me by Zoe Glass over at the Drawn to the Flame podcast, and I've been really happy with how it's performed so far. If you haven't had a chance to check out that podcast, I'd highly recommend it. Zoe and uh, Unite will always have great insights into the game. In their most recent episode, they took an in-depth look at one of the other s investigators in the Survivor class, Wendy Adams. So if you're looking for any tips or tricks on playing Wendy, I... Uh, recommend you check out that episode at drawn to the flame podcast dot blogspot dot com so i've had a chance to play this deck against lost in time and space three times so far i've beaten it twice and got thoroughly thrashed once so uh, this game could go either way i think there are several cards that are uh, key to beating this scenario this is a dark side deck uh... sorry a dark horse deck not the dark side that's a different game Dark Horse deck, so we really want to see Dark Horse as early as possible to give us that uh, stat boost across the board. Uh, there's also plenty of opportunities to take horror in this scenario, so uh, Peter Sylvester is key to keeping that in check. It's always nice to drop the horror on Peter and uh, wash it away at the end of the turn. Peter also boosts our willpower by one, which uh, is important to passing those willpower checks that the uh, encounter deck throws at us. I've also found newspaper to be really helpful in this scenario. It uh, gives Duke a nice boost at some of the high shroud locations. And I feel like you, you do get rid of your clues frequently enough that, uh, that it's not too much of a, of a liability. And it, it is very nice to have, though, to pick up those clues uh, as quickly as possible, especially if you're racing uh, toward the end of the scenario and you're just trying to get it done. I'm also going to be looking for my copies of Ward of Protection to cancel some of the, uh, the treacheries that could definitely ruin my day. This deck uses 15 experience points worth of upgrades, so I've included two weaknesses in the deck. Haunted and Internal Injury, and I'm hoping to see neither of those at uh, any point in the game. Hopefully they will be discarded to Visions of Futures Past. So with that in mind, let's give this a try and see how we do. Ashcan Pete starts in play at another dimension, unfettered by reality. It is a six shroud location with zero clues and the other world trait, and it has the forced effect. When a location leaves play, move each investigator and unengaged enemy at that location to another dimension, and that cannot be cancelled. Now, unlike previous uh, scenarios in the Dunwich Legacy cycle, most of the locations are in the encounter deck, and so uh, they do not uh, start in play, and you need to find them, get them into play, then you need to travel to them. Ultimately, your goal is to reach the edge of the universe, and you need at least two clues in order to move 
to the edge of the universe. Once you're there, you can r get to the Tear Through Time, which is another Otherworld location. But if you uh, take too long, you could end up facing off against the big bad. That is yogg -Sothoth, the lurker beyond the threshold. He has four combat and four health and uh, no agility. And he has the Ancient One and Elite traits. He is Massive Hunter and has Retaliate. And he gets plus six health per Investigator, so he will be at ten health should we encounter him. Yogg-Sothoth cannot be evaded and cannot make attacks of opportunity. He has the response trigger when Yogg-Sothoth attacks you. Instead of taking up to X Horror, you may discard the top X cards from your deck. Then if you have no cards in your deck, you are driven insane. He will hit you for one health and a whopping five sanity. So, uh, of course, his mechanic works very well with the Beyond the Veil, which uh, discards the card, which if you uh, deck yourself, you will end up taking 10 damage, as well as all the other cards in the encounter deck that uh, will sap the cards from your deck. So chances are, are pretty good that we will end up with a bond Beyond the Veil in play, and then we will have to manage that carefully. Uh, avoiding cards like visions of futures past and whatnot. Our agenda is 1A. All is one. Pathways of sound and color extend for an eternity in all directions, dotted with impossible architecture and overgrown with alien wildlife. The lines between objects are jagged and shifting, and your skin feels as if it were inside out. And it has the forced effect after you are moved to a location by an encounter card effect, you take one horror. And it has a doom threshold of four. Our act is 1A out of this world. Somehow you must find your way across this alien landscape in order to find the nexus that was described in old Waitley's tome. And it has the action discard the top three cards of the encounter deck choose a location discarded by this effect and resolve its revelation ability and you need two clues per investigator in order to advance so that will be two clues for us and uh, the action uh, trigger on this card is one of the primary ways that you bring out locations out of the uh, encounter deck you could just wait for them to appear naturally but uh, that will be very time consuming so I think a lot of our early actions in the game will be to try to get as many locations into play as possible to give us a lot of options uh, where to move and uh, how to get to the edge of the universe. We are playing Lost in Time and Space on standard difficulty in standalone mode. The skull is a minus one for each extra dimensional location in play to a maximum of minus five. So that uh, will become progressively more painful as more locations enter play. Usually it's about a minus four or a minus five. The cultist is reveal another token and if you fail after this skill test, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a location is discarded. Put that location into play and move there. That is, uh, can be particularly painful. Uh, if you're trying to get to certain locations. Not all of the locations in the deck are connected to each other, so if you are trying to get from one place to another, sometimes you end up being unable to move until you're able to get to find another location out of the deck. And uh, having to draw this cultist and fail uh, can really set you back. The tablet's a minus three, and if Yogg-Sothoth is in play, it attacks you after this skill test. And the Elder Thing is minus X. X is the shroud value of your location. If you fail and your location is extra-dimensional, extra discard it. That means if you are at another location and you fail, you are going to probably end up moving back to the another dimension and you are going to take a horror as a result of all is one. The uh, 
the Elder thing can also be particularly painful at another dimension where it's a whopping minus six. We have Ashcan Pete in play with his trusty sidekick, Duke, and a copy of Scrapper. We're ready to draw our opening hand. We'll shuffle up our deck here and see what we get. There is Racked by Nightmares, a Vicious Blow, a Stroke of Luck, a Lucky, and a Fire Axe. I'm going to pitch that entire hand. That's definitely not what I'm looking for uh, in any way, shape, or form. Well, we get to draw a card first for Racked by Nightmares, which is a Haunted, which we'll get to see another card, which is a Guts. Yep. That's going too, so everything's getting pitched. And we will draw five new cards. There's another Vicious Blow, a Lucky. Boy, oh boy, this is Manual Dexterity, Unexpected Courage, and Peter. So we got one of the cards we were looking for, and a lot of stuff that we weren't. So uh, that is not a great start. We will shuffle those cards back into our deck. Would have been really nice to see Dark Horse, but it uh, looks like we're going to have to do this possibly the hard way. So I think we're ready to start the game here. We can, uh, I think our first action obviously is going to be to put Peter Sylvester into play. So he will give us extra agility and extra willpower. Then we've got to make a decision. Are we going to draw some cards or bring out some locations? We're not really in a f position yet to be doing much investigating, so I'm going to draw a couple cards. There is a Fire Axe and another copy of Lucky. We will go to the upkeep phase. I will draw a card, which is a Perception, and gain a resource. We will add a Doom to uh, All is One and draw our first encounter card of the game, which is Wormhole. It's a hazard and has the revelation, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a location is discarded. Resolve that location's revelation ability, then move to that location. So we are on the move. Whether we want to or not, there's a visions of futures, pa two visions of futures past, another wormhole. There is the prismatic cascade. So that will go. That will go into play. We have to do the revelation effect, which is uh, put prismatic cascade into play and discard a random card from our hand. So we will do that first of all. Discard random card is our perception. We end up moving to the prismatic cascade and we end up taking a horror from the all is one because we were moved to that location by the encounter card. So we will put that horror on uh, Peter Sylvester. The uh, Prismatic Cascade is a two shroud location with three clues and it has the forced ability uh, after the last clue on Prismatic Cascade is removed, discard Prismatic Cascade. And it is connected to the red location and the plus location, neither of which is the another dimension. So we are going to be stuck here at the Prismatic Cascade until we can find another location to move to. All right, we are ready for our second turn. Uh, we could grab a clue. Certainly would be our first option. Duke would be a four versus two on that. So let's give that a try. We'll exhaust Duke. Go four versus two. We draw from the chaos bag. It's a minus one, so we succeed. We will grab a clue. Now we can grab a maximum of two clues from this location because I really don't want it to disappear out from under me. 
the question is whether I draw, do we discard a card to grab, to try again, or do we uh, simply draw some cards and try and find our dark horse? I think what I'm going to do is pitch this manual dexterity to Ready Duke and try it again. So we'll go four versus two again. That is a whopping minus four. That puts us at a zero versus two. However, we can, we do have a copy of Lucky, which we will pitch in order to raise our skill check to two, and we will gain another clue off that. And this is the uh, two experience point version of Lucky, so we get to draw a card. And that is a look what I found. So we have our two clues. We can advance if we wish. And now we have... Yeah, I think we're going to advance. We will flip this over. We will spend the two clues. And we will advance to Act 1B, the Nexus of Dimensions. A light shimmers in the distance, and you head toward it to investigate. The wispy light drifts away from you, floating through the realm's strange gateways, ascending looping staircases and crossing through barriers you dared not cross earlier. With little chance of finding the nexus on your own, you follow the light, hoping it is guiding you in the right direction. So you put the set-aside Edge of the Universe location into play. And that is it. The edge of the universe has the moon symbol, so we cannot move there from here. We need to find something with the plus symbol so we can move there and then hopefully find... There are a couple locations that will have the moon symbol so we can move to the edge of the universe which will advance us to Act 2A, which is Into the Beyond. You continue to follow the wisp of light through the treacherous landscape, though the treacherous landscape makes it difficult, a difficult quarry to chase, and it has the same ability trigger, discard the top three cards of the encounter deck, choose a location discarded by this effect, and resolve its revelation ability. And if we enter the edge of the universe, we advance. So we need at least two clues in order to get to the edge of the universe. And we will go from there. We have one action remaining. I am going to draw a card. We're still looking for Dark Horse. There is our Racked by Nightmares. So we exhaust all of the assets we control and put it into our play area. Assets we control cannot ready, and we have to take two actions to discard the Racked by Nightmares. That really only affects Duke in in a meaningful way, so we will uh, probably have to get rid of that uh, sooner than later. At the end of our turn, we can heal a Horror from Peter Sylvester, so we will do that now. Like I mentioned at the top of the episode, you do take, you, there is the possibility of taking a lot of horror due to the uh, forced effect on the agenda. So it is nice, really nice, <laughs> really, really nice to have Peter Sylvester out to be able to, uh, to absorb some of that. We will draw a card and add a resource. That is a perception. We will add a doom and draw our second encounter card of the game which is a Yithian Observer. Oh dear. Okay, that's going to be a little tricky to deal with without Duke. That's going to be very tricky to deal with without Duke. It's got four combat, four health, and three agility. Monster Yithian traded. It uh, preys on the investigator with the fewest cards in hand, and when it attacks you, you have to discard a random card from your hand. 
and if you cannot, the Yithian Observer deals plus one damage and plus one horror in that attack. Okay, so we've got a choice to make here. If we want to ready Duke, our best bet would be to... Now we can't kill the Yithian this turn because we're going to need to take two actions to discard the Racked by Nightmares, which means we're going to take an attack of opportunity from the Yithian. Then we're going to take another attack from the Yithian at the end of the turn. I think the best we can do is three damage against this thing. That is a free trigger, so that's okay. Okay, so that's what we're going to have to do. We don't really have a, f a fighting chance against this thing unless we uh, we get Duke ready. So we will take the double action to get rid of Rack by Nightmares, and we will take an attack of opportunity from the Yithian, which discards a random card from our hand, which is the Perception. We will take one damage and one horror. Put the damage on Ashcan and the horror on Peter. Now we could could try to evade it. We could try to evade it. That actually might be a better a better choice. We could pitch the unexpected courage we've got in order to evade this thing for a turn. Ready, do, can attack it, and then that will put us in a position to kill it next turn. So we are a 3-4. We do have some resources we can spend on Scrapper. So let's pitch our unexpected courage we will go 5 versus 3. I'm going to pitch a resource for Scrapper to make us a 6 versus 3 against the Yithian. Let's see how we do. Oh, that's a minus 5. That hurts, but I think we've got a lucky we can use. 6, six versus 5 is 1. So we're at three versus one, so we can spend our lucky. Thank goodness we drew two of those in our opening hand in order to uh, pass that skill check, and we will draw a card, which is another fire axe. We did evade the Yithian Observer, so that is good. Now we can pitch our copy of fire axe to Ready Duke and we can attack that thing. That's a, we're a four versus four. Ooh, that's not great. We can go pitch our vicious blow, five versus four. We will spend another resource on Scrapper. Go six versus four. I think that's about as good as we can do at the moment. So six versus four, chaos bag. Oh, another minus five. That is, uh, that sucks. That sucks. Can't uh, put it any any other way than that. Very well. So we took the double action. We took the free action to ready Duke. Oh, sorry, we evaded. So, nix that. We uh, can't attack it anyway. So that won't count. We already took... T we took our two actions, so the evade doesn't really... Uh, we don't need to ready Duke at all, actually. So, yeah. Have to retcon that a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, we only had the uh, one action left, which was the evade. 
So during the enemy phase, this Yithian will pop back. And then we will draw, we will ready everybody. We will remove a horror from Peter. We will draw a card. There's a ward of protection. That's awfully nice to have uh, with this encounter deck. And we will gain a resource. And add a doom. All right, our next encounter card is oh, Vast Expanse. If there are no extra dimensional locations in play, Vast Expanse gains Surge. Otherwise, you test Willpower X, where X is the number of extra dimensional locations in play to a max of five. And for each point you fail by, you take a horror. We have only one extra dimensional location in play so x so we're testing willpower one wow that's uh usually when i draw this card it's always five so that i'll, I'll take that any day we're uh we've got a five willpower so we'll just do that straight up five versus three is a two so we pass we pass that with flying colors all right, we get another crack at this Yithian. We do have, uh, we do get our vicious blow back, so we will try this again. Pitch the vicious blow and exhaust Duke to give us a four five versus four, and we'll pitch a resource to scrap her to make us a six versus four. Let's see how we do this time. Actually, I'm going to also pitch one of our extra copies of Fire Axe to make it a seven four. It's a minus one, so it will take three damage. Now, now we need to kill this thing. I hate to do it, but I'm going to pitch our lost uh, Look What I Found to Ready Duke, and we are going to try this again. Uh, we will pitch another resource. So that will be four, five versus four. Well, that's not great. What do we get? Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. There's the auto fail. Okay, so I think our best option now is to try to evade it. We'd be a four versus three. Four versus three for the evade. Oh, another minus five. The chaos bag isn't uh, fooling around today. So we will be taking an attack from this thing. That is uh, not good. So we have to discard a random card from our hand. I really hope it's the Fire Axe, thank goodness. And we will take a damage and a horror. Put the horror on Peter. And we're going to put the damage on Duke this time. We will ready ourselves. Draw a card and add a resource. So we drew a preposterous sketches. That uh, I would really like to be able to play that because we really need to find our dark horse if we're going to be uh, if we're going to make any progress in this scenario. We need that dark horse to help us uh, boost our tests here. However, we are advancing this round. We will add a doom and flip our agenda. Flips to Familiar Echoes, Agenda 1B. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck, then discard cards from the top until a location is discarded. Then the lead investigator resolves that location's revelation effects. And it has a lot of uh, text here if you're playing in campaign, but uh, we are not, so we're going to simply ignore that for the time being. So we shuffle, discard pile into encounter deck, and find a location. So we will do that now. We 
didn't uh, see a whole lot of the encounter deck yet because we haven't been able to discard for locations. So let's see what we get. There is uh, there's another prismatic cascade. And that is unfortunate because that is going to discard our only card in our hand. Sadly. And uh, interesting enough, it's interesting, you cannot move from one prismatic cascade to the other. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. So we will resolve its revelation effect, which is to uh, discard a random card from your hand. Again, I would like to be able to keep my uh, my word of protection. There goes the pro. Maybe keeping the sketches would have been nicer. We still need to get rid of this Yithian somehow. And uh, but neither card helps us in that respect. Uh, so we advance to our next agenda, which is past, present, and future. As you cross this realm, you catch occasional glimpses of reality, scenes from old memories, more recent visions from the past few days, and sometimes even events that you do not remember ever happening. And it has the same forced effect as Agenda 1A. After you are moved to a location by a, a counter card effect, you take a horror, and it has a doom threshold of 4. We need to draw an encounter card, which is, oh no, a conglomeration of spheres. Boy, we are getting hammered here. Hammered hard, and we are not really in a position to deal with it. We have lost both of our fire axes, and... Uh, Relying on Duke to kill these things is getting quite painful. Okay. This could get bad real quick here. Okay, Yithian, we need to get rid of you somehow. If we exhaust Duke and spend a resource on Scrapper, we'd be at a 5-4. So we will do that. Chaos Bag says plus one. All right, good, good stuff. We will add that thing to our victory display. One enemy down, one to go. This is the conglomeration. We are a lowly two versus one, but uh, it doesn't have retaliate. So we will simply attack it straight up for a minus one. That is a damage. And we will attack it again. There's the minus five again. That will be a miss. We are going to take a damage and a horror. Uh, we will remove a horror at the end of our turn from Peter and add it back. And we will take another horror on, or take another damage on Ashcan because there's no way I'm putting a damage on Duke right now. We will draw a card. There is Dark Horse. Okay, now we just need to get the three resources to play it. Duke readies. We get a resource. Doom goes on the agenda, and we draw our next encounter card. There's the visions of future's past. Test five willpower for each point you fail by. Discard the top card of your deck. I am not going to cancel that. I am going to keep it around because I need to... Uh, I need... Uh, I, I want to keep that uh, word of protection just in case of we draw beyond the veil. That's really what I want to cancel with it. So we've got to test five willpower. We are a five willpower. So this is just going to be straight up. There is the elder thing, minus X, which is the shroud value. So that is not great because... Shroud value is minus two, 
So we are going to lose two cards from our deck. So we lose two cards from our deck, first of all. There's our second copy of Pete and our second copy of Dark Horse. Thank goodness we drew a Dark Horse when we did. Now we have to discard this Prismatic Cascade, which bounces us back to another dimension. And we take another horror due to the uh, forced effect on past, present, and future. Uh, because we had to discard the extra dimensional location. Okay. We need to kill the conglomeration. We are going to go with Duke straight up, 4 versus 1 for 2 damage. Chaos Bags is minus 4. Oh, Chaos Bag, what are you doing to me? Oh, okay, so that's 0 versus 1. So that's no good. We really need to try to save some resources for that Dark Horse. So we're just going to have to attack this uh, conglomeration straight up, two versus one. First attack is the Cultist. So reveal another token. If you fail, discard cards until we get a location and move there. Now, yeah, okay. So we have to reveal another token, first of all. Plus one. <laughs> okay, so we avoided the, the whole nastiness of drawing another location. And we do a damage to this thing. One more time. We need another plus one. Come on, Chaos Bag. You can do it. Minus two? Minus three. That's not a success. We will heal a horror from Peter and add a horror, and we will take another damage from uh, the conglomeration. We will ready Duke and draw an encounter or draw a card. Stroke of luck. Okay. Nice. That will get us past at least one check. So. Uh, we might be able to, c we really need to kill the conglomeration sooner than later. We get plus another resource, add a doom. Next encounter card is going to be the Tear Through Space. It is an other world and extra dimensional location. It has one shroud and one clue per investigator. And it surges, you just it's revelation effect, it just comes enters play. And it has the forced effect. At the end of the round, you either place one doom on tear through space or discard it. So if we want to keep it around, we do have that option. Uh, we can get there easily enough, but we need to uh, deal with this conglomeration first. So it will surge. It surges into the dimensional doorway. It is a moon location. Uh, unfortunately, we have no way of uh, getting there at the moment. Uh, it's the, I'm not sure what that symbol is, squiggly line. I don't know, it's a two, two shroud location with one clue. Revelation, put Dimensional Doorway into play, then draw the topmost hex card in the Encounter discard pile. That, I believe, is going to be the visions of Futures Past. It is. So we are, we are facing visions of Futures Past once again. So we are going 5 versus 5. 
encounter oh we get a plot we get an elder sign so we pass that with uh, flying colors plus two no problem okay and the dimensional doorway has a forced effect at the end of your turn if you were at the dimensional doorway you must either spend two resources or reshuffle the dimensional doorway into the encounter deck so uh, right now we cannot get to the edge of the universe and we cannot get to the dimensional doorway which is fine because we're not really in a position to be moving anywhere anytime soon with this uh, conglomeration that is causing us all sorts of trouble. We need to kill it. Uh, we can exhaust Duke to go four versus one. That's a minus one, so that'll be two damage. Okay, the question is, do we discard something? If we discard something, we can be in a position to... I hate to do it, but I'm going to pitch the Ward of Protection to Ready Duke so we can attack the conglomeration again. Chaos Bag says we can have it, barely barely. So we will kill the conglomeration and we have one action left which we can we can't get our dark horse into play yet. Uh, we need to uh, we're probably going to end up discarding that tear through space because we're just not going to be able to get there this turn. I think we'll draw a card. We need to get our hand up here. Uh, there's a stroke of another stroke of luck. We will heal a horror from Peter Sylvester. Finally, no enemies in play. We will ready Duke draw a card gain a resource. We are finally in a position to play Dark Horse. We will add a Doom and hopefully we will not draw Beyond the Veil now because I've had to pitch our Ward of Protection. Nope. It is another vast expanse. If there are no extra dimensional locations in play, it gains Surge. Otherwise, we test Willpower X, where X is the number of extra dimensional locations in play to a max of 5. There is 1. There is 2. And there is 3. So X is 3. Willpower 3 test. We are Willpower 5. That's good enough for me. Skull is going to be a minus three because there are three extra dimensional locations in play. So that was a five versus three minus three is two. So we take a horror. That's fine. We'll throw it on Pete. That's what he's there for. He's keeping us in this game. I think if if we didn't have Pete, we'd we'd have gone insane long ago. So that's fine. We can get our Dark Horse into the game here. Let us do that right away. Okay. Now we're in a bit of a... So we've got that. Now what we need, we need to... We need to oh, we needed to discard this tear through space since we're not going to add a Doom to it and we're not going to go there. We need two clues, and we need to find a way to get to the edge of the universe. Let's work on the clues first. We're going to exhaust Duke to move to the Prismatic Cascade. So we are a 4-5 with Dark Horse, so a 5 versus 2. Chaos Bag says minus 3. 5 versus 2, so, yeah, so that'll be a success. 
Then we could go 3 versus 2 for the second clue. Or we could pitch this, look what I found. We've also got the stroke of luck, which we could pass a test automatically. Ooh, that's a tough choice. Um, three versus two, but we do have a shot at passing automatically. Okay, we'll do it. Three versus two. I'm game. That's a minus three. I'm going to pitch the... Oh, I have to pitch it during the test, don't I? Okay, I screwed that up. I needed to pitch that during the test. No problem. We know that for next time. Uh, so that will be a fail. And then our next check, we will pitch this the uh, stroke of luck to give us uh, 3, 4 versus 2. It's a minus 3. And we can uh, exile this test to successfully pass it. So we will exile the stroke of luck in order to succeed at that. Okay, we've got our two clues. We really need to find the locations we need. So let us uh, ready Duke and draw a card. There's another ward of protection. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, we've only got 12 cards left in our deck, so uh, We'll add a Doom. That's going to flip us, unfortunately. That's going to put us on Agenda 2B. The Price of Failure. Shuffle the Encounter discard pile into the Encounter deck discard until you get a location and use its revelation effect. Again, it has a lot of text if you are playing in the campaign, which we are not. So we will not worry about that. We will shuffle those into the deck. Unfortunately, we get to shuffle the stupid conglomeration back into the deck. I really wish we didn't have to do that. And let's give it one more shuffle. Let's see a location. There's an arcane barrier. Pushed into the beyond. Glad to see that go. There's a conglomeration. Glad to see it go. Lots of... S there we go. There's a tear in space which we can travel to. And it has no uh, revelation effect, so fair enough. Now, what happens? It has a clue, and it has the forced effect at the end of the round. We either place one doom on the Terran space or we discard it. So we can go to the Terran space, grab a clue, and move back to the Prismatic Cascade. And then we need... Oh, we need to heal a horror off of uh, Peter. Can't forget that. Okay. Fair enough. We go to Agenda 3A, which is breaking through Throughout this warped dimension, no matter where you travel, there is a haunting shape in the distance. At first it appears as a disk, like a black moon with many wriggling arms. But as time passes, you can tell it's growing larger and larger. And it has the forced effect. After you are moved to a location by an encounter card effect, take a horror. And it has a doom threshold of six. So we are starting to... Uh, get down to it here. We really need to get get moving if we're going to uh, get to the edge of the universe and uh, succeed. We need to draw an encounter card. Which is the Endless Bridge. Okay, that is very helpful. So the Endless Bridge comes into play. It's a four shroud location with two clues, and it says put endless bridge into play and lose two resources, so that is fine. Uh, 
That's the nice thing about playing a Dark Horse deck against this, is losing the two resources and is not a big deal. So you put the Endless Bridge into play, lose two resources, and after the Investigator leaves Endless Bridge, either place one Doom on it or discard it. Now it will allow us to move to... So how do we get to there? We can go... We can go from the Prismatic Cascade to the Terran space. Let's just move these locations around a little bit to make it a little bit easier to tell. That's the one thing about this, uh, this scenario is that it can be tricky sometimes to figure out which location is uh, where you want to go. So if we go Prismatic Cascade to Terran space, Terran space gets us to the Endless Bridge. Endless Bridge gets us to the Dimensional Doorway. Dimensional Doorway gets us to the Edge of the Universe. Okay, so we have a we have a we have a path finally to the Edge of the Universe. Uh, we cannot end our turn on the Dimensional Doorway, or it's going to go away on us. So we probably need to stop at the Endless Bridge this turn and then make the, sh the move to the Edge of the Universe next turn. So we will exhaust Duke to move and investigate the tear through space. That's going to be a 4 versus 1, which we fail with a minus 4. That's fine. Uh, ch -ch -ch yes, four versus one, that's a failure, that's fine. We will move to the Endless Bridge, which puts us at a four. That's our second action, so we are going to need to move one, two. So we're going to need to do that next turn. So what do we do? Do we gain the two resource? Do we gain a re? So here's what I'm thinking. We gain a resource. Well, no, we want to use Duke's move. We want to use Duke's move on the edge of the universe turn, I think. So we will do that. Yeah, it can get pretty tricky with these locations. Uh, we've got one action left. I'm going to gain a resource, I think, just because I can burn it with Scrapper if I need, really need to, but I'd kind of like to have this look what I found ready so I could, if I do fail a skill test at a location, I can grab an extra two clues without too much trouble. We will draw, well, we need to heal Peter first. Ready Duke, draw a card. There's our newspaper, okay. That's gonna be helpful. We add a resource. The Terran space will disappear because I'm not adding a dune to it. We move our locations down the road here. We'll add a doom to breaking through and we will draw an encounter card, which is Collapsing Reality. If you are at an extra dimensional location, discard it and take a damage, otherwise take two damage. We are at an extra, an extra dimensional location. Uh, I do not want to discard it though, heaven forbid, because uh, that'll just bounce me right back to where I was before, and uh, I'm not going to get anywhere, so that is going to get cancelled. I will take a horror with Ward of Protection to cancel that. We'll put the horror on Peter, of course. And uh, we will just get rid of that. I don't want to have to deal with that nonsense. Okay. We are ready to move here, so we could go... Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
No, we're going to keep our newspaper. We're going to move one to the dimensional doorway. We're going to exhaust Duke and move again and investigate the edge of the universe because we have our two clues. The edge of the universe is a two shroud location with two clues. You have to have at least two clues to go there and the investigator at the edge of the universe cannot draw cards during the upkeep phase. But since we advance to the edge of the universe, we advance our act. It is the world's edge. You reach an impossibly dense, dense pitch black void and realize that this place is where all of reality, all that is and all that will ever be, ends. In its center, you see a minuscule rift suspended just out of reach. When you peer through the tear, you are surprised to see the peak of Sentinel Hill. Somehow you've reached the other side of the rift. Now you must find a way to close it for good. And that's it. That's all the text. So we just advance to Act 3A. Close the rift. The uh, unearthly stones on the ground are inscribed with some sort of seal. Approaching them causes a, vi a voice to enter your mind, speaking in an alien tongue. You can discard three, c take an ability action to discard three cards of the encounter deck to choose a location and resolve its revelation ability. And only investigators at the end edge of the universe may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance, and we need three clues in order to advance. Now, I forgot here we need to, since we left the endless bridge, we have to add a doom or discard it. I'm going to add a doom. I want to keep it around. I think it connects to the... We need to go... Blue doorway. Yeah. So to get to the tear through time, we need to go... Uh, we need to take another trip through the another dimension, endless bridge, dimensional doorway, tear through time. Okay, so I didn't add a doom. There we go. Very well. So we are doing a skill check here. It is a four versus two. Or actually, yeah, it's four versus two because we do have our dark horse. So we will see. Minus one. Excellent. We have our three clues. All right. We can spend them in order to advance. So we will do that now. We'll spend our three clues. So only investigators at the edge of the universe may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. So we advance to 4A. 4A is mending the tear. You are utterly exhausted with no idea as to what can be done to close the rift. It is too distant to touch, and nothing you do has any effect. There is nothing here to guide you apart from the unearthly words that are seeping into your mind. Just then you hear a familiar voice within the echoing chorus, and you feel yourself compelled to repeat it. Claude Ostium. You whisper at first the words on the tip of your tongue. You close your eyes to concentrate, and the echo grows louder. When it ends and you open your eyes, you face nothing but an inky abyss, and the tear has vanished. So we remove the edge of the universe from the game and put the set-aside tear through time location into play. So the tear through time comes into play. The edge of the universe goes away. And we advance to our final act which is Act 4A, Finding a New Way. With no clear path, no, with no clear way out of this dimension, you seek another path. Discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. Choose a location discarded by this effect and resolve its revelation ability. That you can do as the action ability. And it has the objective, if each undefeated investigator has resigned, you advance. So because the edge of the universe 
got discarded, we end up getting bounced back to another dimension again. Uh, because we uh, will move there by an encounter card effect, we take a horror, which we will put on Peter. We have two we have two actions left because that was our first action to investigate the edge of the universe. So we can take another action to move or oh, wait a sec. We have one action left. We went one, two, so we have one action left, right? Yeah, that's all we were going to take anyway. One action to move back to the Endless Bridge. We can get there, I hope. Yes, we can. So we can go now Endless Bridge to the Dimensional Doorway to the Tear Through Time. That is our plan. We will ready Duke, remove a horror from Peter, Draw a card, a vicious blow, gain a resource. Do we gain a resource? Yeah, yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we go to add a doom, which puts us at three out of six, and we will draw an encounter card. There is our Beyond the Veil. Add that to our thread area. It surges into a tear through space, which surges into a visions of futures past. Okay. So the tear through time, we will put, we'll put it behind us because we aren't planning to go there. We have no intention of going there. All right. We have a Visions of Futures Pass check to pass. We are a five versus five. I am going to pitch my stroke of luck. I really don't want to discard five fail this sucker. Well, if I auto-fail it, I'm screwed anyway, but I don't want to be disc... Oh, do I do it or not? Five cards. I've got one move to the dimensional doorway. I can duke over to the tear through time. Five versus five. I think I've got time. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to go 5 versus 5 straight up. Minus 3. Okay. So we have to discard 3 cards. 1, 2, and 3. We've got 2 <laughs> weaknesses in our final 7 cards. Oh dear. Okay, that's not great, but... Uh, We've got seven cards to go. We are going to... So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move... We're going to discard the bridge this time. We're going to use Duke to move to the Terran space. We can get there, can we not? Yes, we can. It's a two shroud location with two clues and you can sp take an action to spend two clues and resign. You find a new path and hope that it leads back to safety. So we are at a four versus two with Duke. Now ultimately I would like to fail this test because I have, look what I found, 
if I fail it, I can play look what I found. And will that, yeah, I could resign this turn and win. Let's see what we do. Come on now, okay, chaos bag. This is the time I want you to fail. Minus four. You are the man, chaos bag. Chaos bag, you are brilliant. Thank you. So I draw zero versus two, but I failed by two or less, so I will discard the look what I found to draw two clues. And so that was our, we went one, we duked over for two, and three, we can resign. We can spend two clues to resign. Okay, so we won. Hopefully I didn't make too many errors in this game, but I think we, we played it pretty cleanly. It was a pretty touch and go there at the beginning. The, uh, the assault of the Yithian Observer and the conglomeration of spheres put us under quite a bit of pressure right at the start there. And uh, thank goodness we had Peter Sylvester because otherwise we would have probably had, we probably would have gone insane long long before we reached the tear through time. Uh, that was a, a very fortuitous time to fail that skill check uh, because it does it did pop us right uh, it did give us the two the exactly the two clues we needed in order to resign with our third action that turn and uh, avoid running into another uh, avoid having to draw another encounter card. So I've played this uh, scenario a couple of times now, and uh, it is, I do enjoy it. It is a bit finick finicky with all the sort of trying to figure out which location you can move to and which m location you can't move to and and whatnot. But uh, the encounter deck is also fairly large, so I think it, like the time that I lost this uh, scenario, I really got pounded by the encounter deck. Just a lot of enemies came out, and I just wasn't able to keep pace. But uh, this was a nice mix, nice mix of uh, nice mix of enemies and treacheries. That ward of protection really came in handy to cancel that one that would have discarded the bridge, because then we would have had to have searched for another location. And that would have just really delayed us. So that uh, word of protection was huge. So uh, yeah, that is Lost in Time and Space. I hope you uh, have a chance to give it a try. It's uh, quite fun. And uh, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I ended up with a spare copy of Lost in Time and Space uh, Mythos Pack due to the due to the uh, shipping snafu and whatnot. And I'm going to give it away to a lucky viewer. If you'd like to be entered into the draw, just drop me a line at manfromling at gmail.com. That's M-A-N-F-R-O-M-L-E-N-G at gmail.com. I will include that, uh, that uh, email address in the description. Uh, with the subject line, Lost in Time and Space Giveaway, there's no skill testing questions this time around. Just tell me your name and your favorite investigator and why, and I will enter you uh, into the draw. The deadline for entry is Sunday, September 17th, and I'll accept one entry per person. So uh, please enter before then, and I'll be making the draw sometime after Sunday, September 17th. And uh, hopefully you'll be the winner, and you'll pick up this uh, Mythos pack, and you can try it for yourself. I'm also uh, giving away a copy of the Path to Carcosa Deluxe expansion, which is being released later this month. So make sure you check out that video uh, for details on how to enter that giveaway. Uh, that video should be posted uh, shortly after this one, so do check that out. Thanks again to everyone out there in the big wide world for uh, supporting the channel. It's always appreciated. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this playthrough, I'd appreciate it if you could leave me a thumbs up. It helps out the channel a great deal. If you notice that I made any mistakes, 
or you just want to chat about this great game, please leave a comment down below. I always enjoy uh, hearing what you have to say and hearing about your experiences with these scenarios. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I release future content. If you'd like to meet, reach me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.